Forget everything I said, okay? You don't know me. You didn't tell me anything about your grandmothers. So, I'm here to share with you some thoughts and experiences about wearables and empowerment. And I want to start by showing this picture. Yes. Why is this cute lady related with empowerment and wearables? So I want to try something. How many of you had a grandmother that did those amazing pieces of embroidery and crochet? Okay, we are a lot. But how many of you wanted to learn embroidery and crochet when you were kids and teenagers, thinking, I will be the coolest guy in school if I know these techniques? We have some. Okay, this is good. But probably just a few of you thought this way. And that's because it's a huge prejudgment, and it still remains. So I decided to do my part to change it. And why I did it? Because I believe we can learn a lot from these traditional techniques. And why not learning it from our grandparents? And at the same time, they can learn with their grandchildren and lose their fear of technology. So together with a friend and with Olabi, that is a makerspace in Rio, we created a course called High Tech Sewing, where we combined high and low tech to encourage both generations to work together. I love this project, but before I keep talking about it, I want to explain a bit more about wearables technology, because it's a new concept and not everybody is familiarized with. So the general understanding of wearables technology is when you incorporate electronics or computers into your clothes and accessories. But I like better to describe it as when your clothes and accessories potentiates your connection with yourself and with your environment through technology. I will give you some examples of some of the directions that have been developed so far. If you Google it, the first thing that will appear are fitness devices. Those fitness trackers as bracelets or watches, they are collecting your data and giving you feedbacks, saying, you run five kilometers and you lost 500 calories. Well done, you are on the right track. They are almost your personal trainer, but in a portable version. On the other hand, we have the smart watches that are bringing you even closer to your social media environment, telling you to check your emails or if you received a new message. And there is a third direction that I would like to point out. is the fashion tech. It's the concept that is challenging the fashion industry right now. And it's when you transform a piece of clothing into something interactive, using sensors, lights, smart fibers, even connecting with your smartphone. But I'm not here to talk about gadgets. And that's because I see the wearables technology beyond the object, as a process of learning and self-discovery. I see the wearables technology as a door, a more inviting and friendly way to get in contact with topics that are commonly seen as complex, hard to learn, or topics just for men. I see it as a door to get in contact with STEM topics. And do you know why is it more friendly? Why people feel comfortable with this tool? Because the base of wearables are clothes. And everybody wears clothes. Everybody knows it. So they can feel comfortable using it as a tool and learning a, to a challenge topic through it. And I will share tonight with you four examples using wearables technology that somehow generated a kind of empowerment. And I hope that one of these examples will inspire you to find your own tools. So let's go back to that first image of the sweet lady. I love her. What we had here was the opportunity to break barriers of gender and age, encouraging boys to stitch and girls to solder showing to the young how traditional techniques can be interesting, and showing to their grandparents that they can lose their fear of technology and even learn how to 3D print an object by themselves. In the end, you are empowering both sides. You are showing that they have more to exchange than they realize. You are giving them the opportunity to build new dialogues. The next, the next example, uh, it started with the same idea, but we didn't build exactly a piece of wearable, but we used the same tools and principles. We worked with a big group of young mothers from a community in Rio, and we decided to build together a huge interactive carpet for babies. 
But instead of teaching them how to code or use an Arduino in just two days, I created the shortcut. I got this concept of uh, circuit bending, that you get old toys and you explore their s electronic circuits and you apply it to a new use. So they are already programmed and it's much faster to, to use the interaction. So we spent two entire days building this beautiful carpet and having fun taking apart some noisy princess. This was the funniest part. But what I learned here was that young mothers wanted and enjoyed learning basic electronics. They loved learning how to solder, so they were able to fix their children's toys. Because when you know how it works, you can fix it and you can transform it instead of throwing it away. But the most important aspect here was that they were able to feel comfortable to discuss with a man about these masculine topics on equal terms. The next project, get the same idea of knowing better about what you are using. So we got the concept, the, the protocol created by the designer Susan Lee, and our team in Rio grew this material. It's a biofilm made of kombucha tea. I don't know if you know it, but kombucha is a probiotic tea made of bacteria and yeast that generates a biofilm made of cellulose. And when you put it to dry, it becomes a kind of fabric. So I got this material, and I transform into a wearable, a bracelet that could react to the human interaction. But the most important thing here wasn't the wearable itself, but to show the participants how to work with a biomaterial and how important and empowering it is to be able to grow your own material at home. Because when you do that, you are changing your position in the productive chain. You are growing awareness about the life cycle of the product. And with this consciousness, you can step in at any stage and innovate. You are part of the whole process, not just the final consumer. The next project is started with a personal issue. I'm Brazilian, and I'm living abroad for a while. I still am. And many political issues are happening in my home country during these years. And living abroad, I always felt unable of doing something or showing some support. So I start to wonder, how could I use this technology to help me to express my thoughts and opinions about what was happening there? So I created a project called Wearable as Manifest. And I developed a system in which you can write and rewrite a message very easily and with light. I had no idea how powerful wearing a message with light could be. No idea. So for the first trial, I made a bag on which I wrote the most important and famous hashtag that expressed an opinion against the situation in Brazil. And I decided to take it to the streets. The first time I did it, I was feeling excited and nervous about it. How would I feel using that bag? Would people around understand what I was writing there? So when the sun was going down and the light became more and more visible, I started to feel something different. I felt that I was connected with that bag. As if I was telling, I was whispering those words again and again to myself and to everybody around me. As if I was telling them a secret. <sighs> that that, pa that uh, feeling was super powerful. I came back home with a big smile on my face and feeling empowered feeling that I could scream in silence. So this was the root of the wearables manifest, and it has been spread to others, giving them the opportunity to find their own messages, giving them the opportunity to say a lot without speaking a word. And I'm sharing with you all of these examples because I believe that you can find your own tool of empowerment and see beyond what you understand as technology. And understanding empowerment as a repositioning process, because empowerment first makes you reposition yourself in your own universe, and then your relation with the world and with the others. I found my tool of empowerment, 
So I want to encourage you to find your own tools that somehow generates a positive transformation. Empower yourself, empower others. From there, we can just let it be, and you'll see the transformation happening. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.